Hey, this is the video lesson for the Inquiry Lab on page 67, 68, and 69. So you should be watching this if you were absent. Please follow all directions I give in the video. And remember, you can pause and rewind the video if you need to see something again. So let's get started. We're going to start with this investigation, and we're going to read this problem up here. It says, Jill and Sammy are racing go-karts. Jill completed six laps in 12 minutes. If Sam Sammy raced at the same rate... How many minutes did it take her to complete three laps? All right, so let's write down what we know, and then we'll write down what we need to find out. So let's start here. Let me zoom in a little bit. First off, what we know. We know that Jill completed six laps in 12 minutes. So let's write this down. I'm going to write Jill. So she did six laps in 12 minutes. Okay. Next, it says if Sammy raced at the same rate. So another thing we know is Sammy went at same rate, or same speed if you think of it that way. She's going just as fast as Jill. And the question says, how many minutes did it take her to complete three laps? So that's what we need to find out. So we need to find out, and this is going to be for Sammy. So Sammy... It says how many minutes, so Sammy went, it took her blank minutes to go three laps. Okay, so if we know Jill speed, and we know Sammy went the same speed or rate, we should be able to figure out how long it takes Sammy to go three laps. So we're going to start and we're going to use a bar diagram. Now I erased the bar diagram here, it's in your book, but I'd rather you see how to draw it by watching me draw it. So just watch for this part. It says, use a bar diagram to represent the number of laps Jill completed. The time to travel six laps is 12 minutes. So remember up here, Jill went six laps in 12 minutes. So what I'm going to do for my bar diagram is I'm going to draw a rectangle. And this rectangle is going to represent, sorry, it's messy. It's going to represent the 12 minutes that Jill went. Now remember, she went six laps, so I'm going to split this into six sections. So I like to split it in half, then each half into three. One, two, CC, three on the left, three on the right. So that's six laps. Now in each one, I'm going to write one lap. Now this is what your book has, by the way. So here is this bar. We're saying in 12 minutes, that's the whole bar, she did six laps. That's what each of those little boxes is. Now, in step two, it says each section represents one lap. So remember, this is one lap. Determine the number of minutes it took Jill to complete one lap. So here's what I want you to think about. If this whole thing is 12 minutes and we split it into six laps, what operation means to split? Well, I'm hoping you're thinking division. Division means to split equally. So that, the bar diagram helps me see that if I take 12 minutes and divide it into six sections, I will get how long it takes for each lap. So here it says Jill completed each lap in 12, remember the whole thing was 12, split into six laps, or 12 divided by six, I think you guys know is two. So that means each lap was two minutes. And I can write that down here, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, Two minutes for that lap, two minutes for that lap, and two minutes for that lap. Now, if you think about it, if you add those up, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, isn't that your twelve minutes? All right, so let me go down to step three. So now, remember, this, this bar diagram is only Jill. Remember what we have to find out. Remember, Sammy went at the same speed. So it says, Sammy, it took her how many minutes to go three laps? So watch what we do in step three. And step three, we're like, okay, if this is Jill, 12 minutes, six laps, and Sammy did three laps at the same speed, well, how many minutes will that be? So remember, each lap completed was completed in two minutes. Remember here how I wrote two minutes for each lap? So that's two minutes. Now, this says, so Sammy's time was three times two or six minutes. Now, if I were to use my bar diagram, remember, each lap is two minutes. Two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Add those up, and you get six minutes. So that's just how you can do a bar diagram to help you figure it out.
Um, don't worry about if you can figure this out with a math problem. We'll be doing that tomorrow, but we want you to visualize it. So on to the next page, we are going to do investigation two. In investigation two, they give us a little less information. So in this one, as we go through it, we have to do a little bit more. All right, so here's what it says. In investigation two, it says, Lizette and Miguel are decorating cookies for a bake sale. Lizette can decorate four cookies in 12 minutes. If Miguel can decorate cookies at the same rate, how many minutes will it take him to decorate 24 cookies? So this is like that last problem um, with the go-karts, except now we're doing cookies in minutes. All right, so I'm going to go through and we're going to circle what we know. So first off, we know Lizette and Miguel are decorating cookies. Oh, great. Who cares? All right, next sentence, Lizette can decorate four cookies in 12 minutes. So I'm going to circle that. And remember, that was Lizette. Okay? Lizette can do four cookies in 12 minutes. Now, if Miguel can decorate cookies at the same rate, we have to figure out, I squiggly underline what I have to find out, how many minutes will it take him to decorate 24 cookies? All right, so let's go down, and we have a bar diagram to represent Lizette's rate. So notice here, it was 12 minutes. But this time, it's split into four sections. And the reason is, is because she only made four cookies. So each section is going to be a cookie. I'm just going to write 1C, 1C, 1C. There are four cookies. Now, each cookie, we're going to figure out how many minutes that takes. So imagine here, remember, the whole thing is 12 minutes, and we just split it or divided it into four cookies. So think, if we have 12 split into four cookies, we get three. So each cookie takes three minutes, right? So that's three minutes, and you don't have to draw this, but that's three minutes, that's three minutes, and that's three minutes. And if you think about it, if you add up three plus three plus three plus three, you get 12 minutes. All right, so let's go down to step two. It says label each section one cookie. Oop, I already did that, so if you didn't, remember, you could just write one C. It's quicker. Lizette decorated one cookie in 12 divided by four, or three minutes. We already wrote that down, but we'll write it here. Now... If it takes three minutes, I'm going to write this here. One cookie equals three minutes, right? Now let's think about this. So it will take Miguel 12, 24 times blank or blank minutes. Now where did this 24 come from? Remember our question. It says how many minutes will it take him to decorate 24 cookies? All right. So if it's Miguel's going to do 24 cookies... And each cookie he can decorate in three minutes. Remember, one cookie equals three minutes. That means we would do 24 cookies times three minutes. And if you were to type that in your calculator, you'd get 72 minutes. So it's going to take Miguel 72 minutes to decorate 24 cookies. All right. So if you think about this here, what we did is we figured out how long it takes one cookie. That's called the unit rate, by the way, the speed it takes for one cookie. And once you figure out the speed of one cookie, you can then multiply to figure out lots of cookies. If it's 24 cookies, 24 times 3. If it's 5 cookies, 5 times 3. So figuring out this unit rate, the speed of one cookie, is the key to answering these problems. All right, we're going to go down to investigation three. You're going to do this one with me, and then we'll try some on the next page. So... This says, Devin drives 171 miles in three hours. At this rate, how many miles can he drive in seven hours? So here's what we are going to do. We are going to take this, 171 miles in three hours, and we are going to figure out how many miles Devin can drive in one hour. This is the unit rate. So one hour is going to be blank miles. Once we figure that out, we can easily figure out how long it will take him to go seven hours. So are you ready? Step one, use a bar diagram to represent the number of miles Devin drove. So this information is going to be our bar diagram. 171 miles. Oh, let me write that neater. Okay, so the total miles he went is 171 miles. And you remember it was in three hours? So split this into three, and each one is an hour. 
Remember, you can pause this if I'm going too fast, so you can write down. Okay, so 171 miles in three hours. Now, if you think, didn't we just take 171 miles and split it or divide it into three hours? Well, type that in your calculator, see what you get. Do you, I'm waiting. Did you type it in? 171 divided by three. What did you get? Did you get 57? So that means each hour took 57 miles, right? Now, this is key, guys and gals. If you know each hour took 57 miles, we can use that to answer this question. Are you ready? Step two, and I think we already did this, said label each section one hour. Did it, did it, did it. In one hour, Devin drove 171 divided by three or 57 miles. We figured that out. And now, how would you figure out in seven hours? Because remember, it says, how many miles can you drive in seven hours? Well, you take that seven hours and multiply it times 57. Type it in and you'll get your answer. Go. Type it in. Seven times 57. Seven times 57. Did you get it? Are you done yet? Hurry up. Hurry up. This is taking forever. All right. If you did, it should be 399 miles in seven hours. Okay. So that's the key to solving these. Figure out that unit rate, and then you can get your answer. All right, so they're the investigations. They're supposed to give you an idea of what we're doing. But now, on to the next page, you are going to be working on these problems. I'm going to help you with two of them, but then you're going to be doing the rest on your own, or whatever your absence sheet says. Maybe it will only say to do a couple. But I'm going to help you with two of them. I'm going to help you with... Um, the first one I'll help you with is number one, because it kind of has bars drawn for you, right? They're, they're like just a start. Then I'm going to help you with number three, because it has no bars drawn, and you're going to have to do that. So let's start with number one. Now remember, follow my directions here, because I'm going to have you doing more on your own. All right, let's read the problem and see. First, it says, um, the miles, so we have to use a bar diagram to solve each problem. And here's what it says. The miles traveled in five hours at a rate of 189 miles in three hours. So what we need to answer up here, the miles traveled in five hours. So I'm going to kind of write this here, and I want you to write this down. We're gonna, so we want to know blank miles in five hours. That's going to be the answer we need to find. Okay, that's what we have to focus on. And here is what we know. I'm going to highlight it. We know they went at a rate of 189 miles in three hours. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this and the bar diagram to figure out how many miles you go in one hour. Once you get how many miles to go in one hour, you can figure out how many miles you go in five hours. Are you ready? Okay. So this rate, when they give you the rate, that's what we do to our bar diagram. So 189 miles goes here in three hours. That's what we split it into. One, two, three, three sections. And remember, each section is an hour. One hour, one hour, one hour. Okay? Now think about that. Didn't we just split 189 into three hours? That's what the bar shows you. You do 189 divided by 3. And if you do 189 divided by 3, type that in and write it in this box. Okay, did you type it in? 189 divided by 3 is 63 miles. Now, what is that 63 miles? Remember, in one hour, so I'm highlighting both of those, you go 63 miles. So that's what we did so far. We split 189 miles divided by 3 and got 63 miles in one hour. Now using this, we should be able to figure out in five hours. So think about it. If in one hour you go 63 miles, in five hours, you would just have to multiply this by 5. Okay? So do 63 times 5 and you have your answer to this problem. Go. Okay, did you get it? 63 times 5 is 315 miles in 5 hours. 
All right, now I'm gonna show you without a bar diagram. I don't want you doing this, but so put your pencil down and watch this. Right now, put your pencil down. Okay, here's what you just did. You took 189 miles in three hours, right? And you divided this by three and you figured out that that means you can go 63 miles in one hour. Remember, that is the unit rate. That's your key to unlocking this problem. Figure out how far you go in one, mile, in one hour. Now, if you go 63 miles in one hour, you then did 63 times five and got 315 miles in five hours. So basically, you divided to get one and you multiplied to get your answer. That's really what you're doing here. Okay, now let us start with this. So let me see if I can figure out how do I delete this box. Yay, bye bye box. All right, so now in number three, I'm going to help you with because you remember you're going to do the rest on your own, and you could always re rewind this video and watch if you forget how I did it. So in number three, I'm actually going to have to draw our bar diagram here. So we'll show you what to do here if they don't draw it for you. So in number three, it says we have to. If the find the cost of five pounds of bananas if two pounds cost a dollar sixteen. So you're ready. This is our rate. Two pounds cost a dollar sixteen. So we are gonna draw a bar diagram to figure out what one pound cost. So let's draw a bar. The bar is a dollar sixteen. And it's two pounds, so we're gonna split it into two pieces, and each piece is a pound. LB is a pound. One pound one pound. Now what did I just do to the bar? I split it into two pieces. So if you take a dollar sixteen and split it into two pieces, that's division, right? You'll figure out what one pound cost. So I want you to do that and figure out what one pound cost. So dollar sixteen divided by two. Go. I'll wait. Do 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 hurry up. Alright, did you get it? $1.16 divided by 2, if you did that, you get 0 0.58, which is 58 cents, right? Remember, this is our key to unlocking the problem. This is our unit rate. One pound and 58 is 58 cents. You need that, because if you know one pound is 58 cents, you can figure out the cost of five pounds. So, one pound is 58 cents. How are you going to figure out the cost of five pounds? Think. What are you going to do? Here's what I'm hoping you're thinking. I'm hoping you're thinking you're going to take 58 cents for one pound times five. Do it, and you have your answer. Okay. Did you get it? On your calculator, it comes out to 2.9, right? Do you know how to make that money? You always have to add that zero at the end to get two digits. It will be $2.90 for five pounds of bananas. All right, so that's all I am helping you with. I'm hoping it helped because now you have to do, I'm assuming it's the rest of the problems, two through eight, maybe it's only a couple. Look at your absence sheet to tell you what, it, what to do now. And for each one, yes, you have to draw a bar diagram. So make sure you're doing that. And if you forget how, rewind the video and look back to see what we did. But remember, the main thing is you're going to be dividing to get your... Your unit rate, that's what I have highlighted here in green and blue. And once you get that, you multiply to get your answer. All right, suckers, that's it for today. Ask me for help if you have questions. Later.